Well, if you think the southern border is a mess now, just wait till you see the coming attractions. President Biden says he's ending a Trump-era immigration rule on May 23rd. That rule, called Title 42, allows border officials to turn away migrants for COVID-related reasons. Now, Biden's getting pushback from all sides about the potential fallout of this plan. Border officials encountered more than 200,000 migrants just last month, and they're bracing for many more once the rule ends as planned. Now, despite rumors that the president is considering a delay on this policy, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says, nope, they're moving full steam ahead. Is the president or are you guys having discussions with advisors about delaying the removal of Title 42? Right now, we are planning and preparing for the end of Title 42 enforcement on May 23rd. But I would say that there are a range. The president agrees that immigration in our country is broken. It's a system that is broken. There are a range of ideas out there in Congress, Democrats, Republicans, others, some who support a delay of Title 42 implementation some who strongly oppose it. Uh, and there are a range of other ideas of reforming our immigration system. This would all require congressional action. We're happy to have that conversation with them. And meanwhile, Kamala Harris is on top of all those root causes, right? Well, how bad is this going to get? Panel is back, Katie, Joe, and Spike. Joe, let's start with the media angle on this. There's been a lot of coverage mm -hmm. of this whole situation. And what strikes me is there's yeah. not a ton on the policy implications of the disaster that awaits if Title 42 goes away. A lot of the focus is framed through a prism of politics. Democrats are worried this could impact their reelection. Suddenly they're concerned about an issue that typically they've sort of poo-pooed. It's just it's a politics obsession in a lot of the press. Sure, Guy. And it's not a hard story to report on, right? Because you are looking at raw numbers here. At this pace, we are looking at 4.5 million to 5 million illegal migrants entering this country since this president took office. So if you're doing the math on this and you want to put it in context for an audience watching at home or anybody reading uh, online or in a newspaper, that's seven times the population of Denver or Boston, major cities, in terms of the number of people coming into this country for two years under this president. And despite the media coverage, which has basically been the bias of omission, ignoring this story at the border for the most part, mm -hmm. you don't see major reporters down at the border reporting on this. The administration is polling in the low 20s in terms of their handling of this, and yet they keep allowing it to happen anyway. So if this isn't being done for political upside reasons, what's the end game here, Guy? That's the question I would have as a journalist. Yeah, our colleague at Fox, Bill Malugin, often seems pretty lonely down there as he covers this absolutely enormous right. story. Mm -hmm. Just the number so so far of people encountered or known gotaways at the southern border under this president, more than three million. It's larger or roughly the population of Iowa. I mean, it's it's a staggering number. Wow. So, Spike, you ran for public office, so you might be able to spot some hedging from a political actor. I'm wondering if you heard what I heard there in that answer from Saki. She had some weasel words in the answer in the response to Peter Ducey. A lot of people said, oh, see, they're sticking with this date, May 23rd, it's locked in stone. But she said, well, right now, they're planning and preparing for that date. Yep. Is that some wiggle room, maybe, that they're starting to give themselves? Are you suggesting that Jen Psaki is using weasel wording? I'm, yes. I'm done with this program. <laughs> no, I, obviously that's what's going on, right? We're going to see what we typically see, uh, the Republican, Democrat, uh, good cop, bad cop routine. The Democrats are going to say, we want uh, this additional COVID funding. The Republicans are going to say, OK, but you need to apply the COVID restrictions to the uh, asylum seekers as well. And in a stunning uh, display of bipartisanship, everyone's going to get what they want, except, of course, the taxpayer and, and the migrants in this case. I, I, none of this is going to do anything to help uh, the surge on the border. None of of this is going to stop uh, children and families from being put in cages. I'm sorry, uh, the Republicans, not president, shelters, not <laughs> cages. They're shelters now after January of, of 2021. Uh, what would take mm -hmm. to stop the surges would be twofold, and it would require a lot of political uh, courage that does not exist on Capitol Hill. Number one, it's going to take addressing the reason why the surges are happening, and that's the political turmoil from narco terrorists and rogue governments, which are often being uh, sponsored and, and, and uh, promoted by 
by federal agencies, which requires looking at how the war on drugs is is, uh, com- is contributing to that. And number two, making legal immigration great again by returning to the system that most of our ancestors used, which is more of an Ellis Island streamlined approach. Neither of those is going to happen, which means that the humanitarian crisis is going to continue. But thankfully, that will allow Governor Abbott to continue using taxpayer money to voluntarily send asylum seekers to D.C., where they're signed up by to by NGOs for assistance programs. That'll show them. Well, they're claimed asylum seekers, and I would probably dispute a few of your points there, but fair enough. It's your vantage point. Katie, you and I are actually going to the border next week with townhall.com. We're going to be reporting from the southern border uh, down in Texas. I know intellectually what's happening down there. I'm not sure I'm really prepared to see it because it's already horrible. And this is before Title 42 goes away. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not just happening in Texas. This is also happening in Arizona, New Mexico. I've done a lot of reporting on the border from the Arizona side where it's more trafficking of the gotaways and the people who don't want to be detected. And the administration has downplayed this issue of having people who are unvetted coming into the country. 600,000 individuals have come into the country undetected. And they're saying, well, you know, we never catch that many, that many terrorists who come across. Uh, It's a national security concern. It's an overwhelmed uh, local municipality concern. It's a health concern. And at the same time, as we talked about at the beginning of the show, they're they're reinstating this mask mandate. They're perfectly willing, as we've seen throughout the pandemic, to allow tens of thousands of people to come right. over the border on a daily basis to overwhelm the system. Border Patrol is not patrolling the border. This administration has enabled cartels to give them a billion-dollar traffic in, traffic industry that was not happening under the Trump administration. And so it's a complete disaster. And they keep saying, well, maybe there's some wiggle room with Title 42. They've already stopped implementing Title 42 when it comes to people from the northern triangle countries. Yep. They're releasing single adult men from those countries into communities across the country. So they're, they're already doing that. So this idea that they're somehow maybe going to repeal it to appease some parts of the Democratic Party who are waking up to this political re- reality that even in Texas, along the border, Hispanics are leaving the Democratic oh, Party yeah, no, in they're, droves they're because fed they don't up. The people like down there are seeing it every day, right? This is their, their experience every yep. day. And they're like, no, enough. And May, what, 23rd yeah. is right around the corner. Shifting gears.